All right, so a graph of a function. So, um, oh, let me let me mention something real quick about it. Oh, no, we'll do it later, we'll do it later. Well, there's a good time to do it. Um, so a function given its domain is a set of ordered pairs. So the graph of a function is all such ordered pairs. And so this is a visual representation of the graph, I guess is a, fan, a fancy way to do it. Um, yeah, the main purpose of this section is just getting familiar with graphs and the course, uh, get familiar with the corresponding graphs. So let's go ahead and crunch through this. All right, so here, um, do I have my pencil? Good. Um, so here, if I'm doing y equals four, that means if I'm assume if I don't draw on things, I am assuming one tick is one. So this is four right here. And so my y equals four will be, oops, not what I wanted. It's apparently from the last time I hit the button. So y equals four is this line right here. And so um, x equals some number would be up and down. And so this is a very simple graph. So this is linear. This is also linear. Um, if I was gonna graph this, do I need to put this into y equals mx plus b in order to graph it? The answer is no. This is actually just the standard form of a line. Um, we're not gonna go into lines quite yet. But an easy way to do this is if I plug in zero for x, right? If zero for x, y in this case must be six. And so I can just go one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And if I plug in zero for y, I, my x must be four, so one, two, three, four. And since I last mark was there, three, there we go. And so here's the graph of that. And so for any, any line, you just need two points. Um, we'll fully determine that. Here we have x x squared, and so I'm going to each do each one of these real quick. X squared, of course, we know if I have zero, it's zero. If I have one, it's one. If I have two, it is four. Um, and if I have negative one squared, it's still one. If I have negative two squared, it's still four. And so here I have this following graph right here. And there's a reason I'm gonna be going through this. I'm sure you know what x squared looks like. X cubed, you may not know right off the top of your head. So here at one to be one, here it's nine. So it's actually already off the graph. These are eight by eight, by the way. So at negative one, so negative one cubed is actually still negative one, negative, uh, negative two. Oh no, it is eight, sorry. It's not nine, it's eight, I lost my mind. Uh-oh. Ground on the wrong way. That's okay. <laughs> uh, that's how our graph looks like this. Have you guys seen x cubed before? Yeah, all right, most people have. Okay, so let's go on to, I mean, the first page is really, really quite generic. So let's do the second page over here. Um, so here, we're gonna just jump ahead a little bit. So you've seen x cubed before. Um, so what about x to the fifth? I mean, this is something you may or may not have seen, but let's just do it by plotting points. It's actually plot points now. So if I plug in zero and x to the fifth, I'm gonna get zero. If I plug in one, I'm still gonna get one, right? But if I plug in two, I'm gonna get two to the fifth. Well, what's two to the fifth? Well, it's Two times two, okay, we'll go times two, times two, times two. So this is what, four, eight, 16, 32. So it's like way off, right? I, turn, I made it quiet, so good, good joke though, I like that. I bet it, it's probably better to tell me. Oh, I can't help myself. Let me find out. Alexa. What's two to the fifth? Two to the power of five is 32. It doesn't. <laughs> it does it just fine. And so here at negative one, we'll get negative one. And then here at negative two, we're gonna get minus 32. So it just quickly leaves the graph. So here, this, 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 and then it's just like straight off. 
So it looks vaguely like this. But notice how this looks a lot like x, x to the cubed. Right? And here it's at 2 to the 6. If I plug that in, here we're going to get 0, 0. 1 is going to give me 1. Minus 1 is going to give me 1. 2 will give me this time 2 times 32 would be 64. And 2, all right, negative 2 would give me minus 64. Or no, positive 64. Hold up. That's a positive. So here, 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 and then it just goes straight on up. And so it's much sharper, but notice here, it still looks very much like x, x squared. Um, so notice, so from the example above, you're going to notice a pattern. And that's the whole point of going through all this is the pattern. That for even powers like x squared, um, x to the fourth, x to the sixth. So they're all going to look something like this. So, and actually, I'll go through the same point if I was being more precise. So they all kind of look like this. So they all open upwards in broad power, like x, x cubed, and x to the fifth. Um, well, x, oops, I hit my button too soon. Back. x looks like that. So this is y to the x. x cubed still goes through these three points, and yet it's just a little bit more turned looks like this, and then x to the fifth still goes through those three points, but just heads in faster, okay? And so for even powers, it all looks like this. For odd powers, it all looks like this. And so you can quickly just look at a graph and say, well, it's even or odd real quick um, by sketching this. Um, same thing for here, our x cubed, uh, or our square root functions will have the same format. Um, here, our plug-in points, Zero is indeed zero. One is indeed one. And then here I'll plug in four, which is indeed two, which makes, and then how we have four on that tune, so I can grab this. But what is the square root of negative one? What's this? One I. <laughs> so, Currently, we're going to assume we can't produce i. So undefined is the answer um, we'll go for now. i is definitely correct, right? The square root of negative 1, we define this to be i, and that's where we get into complex numbers. Um, but right now, we're going to say it's undefined since we're working in the reals, and this is a real graph. And so we're going to say it's undefined. So we just have literally this is outside our domain for now. So our domain here is from including zero to infinity. So, but let's, let's look at uh, the cubic root of x. And so the cubic root of x, um, here's plug in some values. If I have a zero, I get zero. If I plug in one, I still get one. If I plug in eight, and the reason I choose eight, because eight is the cube root of Two, so eight two to the third is eight, so the cubic root is two. So what happens if I plug in negative one here? What do I get? What happens when I plug in a negative in for a cube root? Yeah, we actually can get back. So for the negative uh, for odd roots, we can actually get the odd answers. And so minus eight gives me minus two. So here, here, and here, um, here, and here. So this, this looks oddly like if I took the x cubed graph and kicked it on its side. So if I kicked my x cubed graph on its side, this is what I would get. Um, well, I kicked it on its side and flipped it. But this, so, but the same thing would be true here. As I get x to the fourth, it would just be a little bit flatter of a curve. And if I get x to the, uh, the fifth root of x, it would just be a little bit flatter of a curve. Um, and so the root things follow the same format. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and zoom on in. All right, let's do, um, let's do our reciprocal functions. Um, 
let's do an even and odd one and they kind of fall out the same um here let me just see if i can't make this a little bit cleaner so i'm gonna move i'm gonna move one in to here so i'm gonna make this just a little bit so it's a little bit more zoomed in so we know what's going on so here if i plug in if i plug in zero what do i get This is the first thing we always plug in is zero. What do we get in here? Undefined, right? Yeah, we get undefined. So this one won't accept zero. But if I plug in one, I get one. If I plug in minus one, I get minus one. If I plug in 0 0.5, I'm going to get two. If I plug in minus 0 0.5, I'll get minus two. And if I plug in two, I get a half. And then minus two gives me minus a half. So that's plenty of points. That's plenty of points. And so let's go ahead and plot, uh, plot those. So here's one, here at a half, I'm at two, here at two, this will be two on this graph, I'm at a half. And so it looks like this. Um, same, and then here would be at minus one minus two, and then at two, and at a half. Okay, so this is what the graph of one over x looks like. Um, these are popular graphs in calculus. Um, can we do the same thing over here? Sure. Um, or let's go ahead and keep the same, the same one, two, oops. All right, so here, zero is still undefined, one still one, negative one in this case is one. Um, let's see if I can make this a little bit easier to do on my brain. Two gives me a fourth. And then here, So this is what we'll have here. So I want it here, here I'm at a fourth. And then here if I plug in, if I plug in a half, what do I get back out? If I plug in a half, see if you guys can produce that one. Have you guys do at least one. What happens if I plug in a half into this? <clears throat> you get one over one fourth, which ends up being four. Yeah, <laughs> it ends up being four. Okay, so here, this looks a lot like that. So it's a little bit stronger. And then here, it looks the same. And so here for the even ones, it looks like this. And so odd and even functions always end up looking like this for your reciprocal functions. Um, we're going to define something kind of interesting. So this is the greatest integer less than or equal to this. I have <coughs> sorry. Um, I haven't really seen this function uh, before because I know this has the greatest. I know this is the floor function. I've actually seen, this is what the book used. I've always known this function, which I call the floor function, and this function, which I call the ceiling function. Um, this means just take your integer, always round it down. This takes your integer, always uh, take whatever number you have, round it to the lowest, in, uh, the next lower integer, and this one means round it up to the next highest integer. The greatest integer less than or equal to x would be the lower integer. And so this is, to me, I know this is the floor function, so the greatest integer function, it doesn't matter. So let's actually plot something a little bit more interesting real quick. So here, if I'm zero, the greatest integer that is less than or equal to zero is zero. If I'm 0 0.5, what's the greatest integer that is less than or equal to 0 0.5? So it has to be, so it, hold on, it needs to be an integer. What integer? 
please do not worry about putting in wrong answers. And I, I, making mistakes is the essence of learning. I always told my friends, if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough. So it should be, I haven't seen it yet. The greatest integer that is less than or equal to 0 0.5, zero. Yeah, someone finally got it. <laughs> All right, so yeah. So it's zero. So it's zero is the is the highest integer. So the, the highest up on the number line I can hit without, but still being less than this. And so zero point two point three, the greatest integer would be two. Oops, two. And then for something like negative one point five, what's the greatest integer here? For negative one point five. It's a good guess. So the correct answer here is two. So negative two is, I mean, negative two, is the greatest integer, is the highest I can get on my integers, which is less than 1.5. So does that kind of make sense to you guys? So it's, so here if I'm on my little number line, here at zero, here at one point, uh, here at 0 0.5, I need to go back to zero, right? Because I'm not quite one. Here at, here I'm negative one. Here if I'm at one point, negative 1.5, I need to go back to negative two, okay? And so it's always just dropping down. And actually when we graph it, it makes a lot of sense because here at zero, I can actually achieve zero and then I go here to one. Let's go and make that one. Let's make this two, let's make this three. So here, let's go keep the same scaling. And then at one, I can be one, and I'm always one until I hit two, which is an open circle. And here at two, I am two. And then at 2.3, I'm still two. At 2.7, I'm still two. And then here at three, I'm not three anymore because I moved up to three. And here I got this. And then here for the negative numbers, at negative one, I can be one. And that's all the way through from negative 0.5, negative 0.2, up to zero. And then here at negative two, I can, oops, I drew that in the wrong spot. There we go. Uh, here we go. And then, there we go, okay. And so here at negative two, it's always a negative two. So at 1.5, I have to go back to two. Okay. So this is, these are interesting functions. You use these more in real analysis and analytical classes than you will in calculus. Um, Though you can technically do calculus with such things, you just won't do the day one. You don't do things with a finite, an inf a countably infinite number of discontinuities. So we call this a point of this where it's discontinuous, right? Uh, you'll get into that in calculus. Um, in calculus, you learn how to, in calc one through three, you can do stuff with finite numbers. So some uh, you can count and you'll split it up, but this has an infinite number of discontinuities, and so you can't really do it. You can, but you don't. You won't know how for a while. Um, so let's do this. This is a piecewise function. If I was going to graph this, if I was going to graph this here at two, so two is where I'm switching. So everything less than two, it looks like x squared. So let's go ahead and x squared. So x squared would be four at two. Would be one zero uh, here and here. So it looks like this because I'm graphing x squared up until that and including that. So this is a solid dot. And then x minus 2. Um, so that'd be minus 2 here. Dot, dot, okay. So make my life easy. Put that here and then here. There we go. And here we've graphed the function. So for a piecewise function, you're just going to do it in parts. Here I graph this part of the function and then at two. So here this means a solid line on this function part. And then here this means an open circle um, at this. Notice here if I had x, x plus two, just for kicks, this would look like this and you wouldn't actually have to draw an open circle. Um, since these two points are the same and therefore it's continuous. But since we don't have that, we need to do an open circle from where we start and go from here. And so that's how we draw these functions.
Um, yeah, so here, here's how we do this. And so these are piecewise functions. So we'll, you'll do a couple of those on the homework. And I don't think I forced you to do that. Oh no, we'll look at the homework at the end. All right, let's do the last one. So what is and is not a function? So let me, let me go over this real quick with you. All right, so here we have the vertical line test. You may or may not have heard about this before. A function, a curve, a curve in a coordinate, a curve in a coordinate plane is a graph of function if and only if no vertical in a line intersects a curve more than once. Let me ref let me make this super clear on what's going on. Um, so let's do this. So let me show you something that does pass and something that doesn't pass. And so let me just draw in some curve. And space. Um, yeah, that's okay. So here I have a curve in space. And so basically, if you just take a vertical line, I'm going to cheat to make these lines. I'm going to cheat to make these lines nice. So if I do vertical lines and it only intersects once, I have, oops, I didn't do that right. And notice here, it only intersects once, no matter where I put the line. And even something really quite close here, it's actually only touching it once. And so this is what the vertical line test is. Um, you only intersect, another facet vertical lines where it only happens once, okay? Basically what this is saying that is the, um, the same output or So basically, I don't want to say this so you misunderstand me. Uh, let me write it this way. For every input, there is only one output. Okay. So for every input, there's only one output. And so for here, um, even though I can have the same, the same values, right? So here at what, oh, one, one, two, three, four, it looks like one in here at one, two, three, four, five, six. So here at four, it looks like one. And then here at minus six, it also looks like one. We can have the same values. We can have the same, we can have different, we can have the same output values for different inputs, but I can't, and I'll show you in this case, draw something that fails. So this one definitely fails, right? <laughs> Oops. So this one definitely fails. So this almost vertical line intersects at three points, right? In fact, let me make my life slightly easier. Let me just do this at one, two, three, four. So here at four, there we go. Make it very vertical. I have four different points, right? And so here, if I have, so here, points on this graph include four and one, two, three, four. So four fours on this graph. Four and, oops, minus four, let me be very clear. Minus four is a point on this curve, right? Minus four, 1.5 is, is a point on this curve and minus four and four. There's a point on this curve. And so here I have for a single input, negative four, I have three different outputs. And so that makes it not a function. Um, oh, let me see the question. So an input, inputs, in, so one input only produces a single out, output, right? Even though different inputs can produce the same outputs. And so this is why it's vertical, not horizontal. Um, eventually, if we did inverses, which I don't think we're going to get into this class, you have the horizontal line test, which means a single input gives a single output. That gives you what we call a one-to-one -one function, which means you can inverse it, right? It means you can find the opposite, the, the function that puts everything back. Right now, I'm just, I'm, now I just want to be very particular. For input, there is, for the, for the input, there is only one output. So here, I can have multiple in, I can have multiple the same output, but I can't have multiple the same input. So here, 
this means the vertical line means that x equals negative four. I had four different I had four different things that this curve produced, and so that's not possible for a function. Okay, um, there'll be there'll probably be like a true false on the exam, like um, you know, like true or false. A function can have a single input can have multiple outputs, and that'll be false, right? Or uh, a function with a, a, a multiple inputs can give the same output, and that's true for a function. So those would be like the questions I'll ask or something. Does that make sense? You'll do a vertical line test and stuff. Okay. All right, so one thing to be very, very careful of is not all equations are functions. And so here we have these two functions. Um, and so if you see these, um, how would you graph them? Well, honestly, at this point, you probably just use Wolfram Alpha. In fact, let's just do that. Let's just do that real quick. Um, excuse me. <coughs> yeah, sadly, I've been sick for the last couple of days. Hey, but look on the bright side. You guys are safe. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it's time for true confession. I'm going to go get tested for Corona because my brother, who, I, um, who I'm with right now, went to his friend's house whose parents tested positive. You're like, yay, I might have the Corona. <laughs> it's fine. If you, if you think you have it, get tested and be in social isolation, right? Do your duty to help people. Um, <clears throat> fine. Yeah, I know, right? Hey, at least I'm a... I'm of the lower demographics, so I know it's just isn't this fun, guys? Don't you miss? <laughs> At least we can't have awkward silences. <laughs> it's like, oh, my teacher might die on me. It, it probably won't happen. I'm in fairly good health, and I'm actually getting better. I was actually more sick yesterday after I was done with you guys. I went. Um, but now I'm off to UNLV campus to go get their little testing in their thing. All right, so here, it does a graph it. Oh, great. So see, see this, it graphed it for us, right? So here's the graph of it. Notice here that this fails the vertical line test. It fails it all over the place. Here it fails, here it fails, here it fails, because this is a graph of a circle. What circle? The circle of uh, centered at, uh, one, zero, right? And then with the radius of square root of three. Okay. So this is a, this is that. And so if, if anytime you need to, you should, I guess you should know how to graph a circle, right? Um, but for, for the other one, so that is the first one. So this is, this fails the vertical line test. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw that in. Oh, look, I can do both at once. Sweet. Let me just quickly draw that in. And so notice this fails it. Okay. And then here, how would I draw this? Well, in actuality, you kind of flip this in your brain and you say y. In actuality, you graph this is let this be your y, this be your x, and then graph it that way, where you graph graph the alternative function of x plus uh, of y equals x cubed plus that. But since we're just using technology anyways, let's go ahead and use technology. All right, um, let me just type that in. I have x equals um, y cubed minus 3y squared. If I can type it in, right? Yeah, look on the bright side. You guys will be like the first people going through UNLV that can use technology. Um, that is super not useful. <laughs> Why does it have it on such a weird scale? Oh, here it actually plotted it y and x. <laughs> it literally did what I told you what I told you to do. So if you're actually going to graph this, um, it literally did what you're supposed to do. Can we plot it on? If we plot it on the normal one, it actually looks like this. Um, that's how it looks on the, I notice here this fails. Wolfram Alpha is smarter than I think it is. It automatically cheated for me. So 
And so once again, while this is an equation, they're not functions. Okay, so equ equations don't equal functions. All right, so that's the end of the first, first day of uh, actual real lecture.